Happy hobby. I'm David Goss. I'm out here on the porch just enjoying a little sunshine out here with my dog Frank. I thought I'd talk a little baseball card history with you guys. Nap Lajouet. Napoleon Lajouet. They call him Larry Lajouet. Doesn't make any sense. But they also call him the Frenchman. But this is a second baseman, turn of the century, early 1900s. I uh, played for the Philadelphia Phillies Athletics, but also Cleveland, which is really where he became a superstar. So much of a superstar that they went from the Cleveland Broncos to become, uh, they became named the Cleveland Naps. That's how big of a superstar. It's a pretty big deal. Now, as a random side note, what's with Cleveland and their sports teams? Uh, Cleveland Naps, then later on the Cleveland Browns. What They have some sort of affinity to naming them after uh, somebody from their team. After the, the Guardians just beat my Rays in the playoffs, are they going to name them now? The Cleveland Jose Ramirez is? Come on, let's, let's get some creativity in there, Cleveland. He was a big rival with Ty Cobb, always in the batting title uh, race uh, conversation with Ty Cobb. He was one of the early superstars in baseball. So now fast forward 25 years to 1933, and Gaudi Gum Company is making baseball cards. Now, they make baseball cards to sell their gum or vice versa, but they had one of the most famous sets in all of card history, 1933 Gaudi cards. In that set, it was a 240 card set. In that set, they had number 106, which was supposed to be Napoleon Lajoie, Nap Lajoie. Well, kids were buying packs up left and right. They couldn't find that one card. They were trying to fill their sets out. Could not get that one card. Well, legend has it that the card was never printed in 1933. They didn't make it. It was truly a short print. Marketing geniuses that they were, incredibly devious. Let's say that. But they decided, you know what? Kids are trying to fill sets. Let's, let, let's make them not be able to fill a set. So they just have to keep buying more and more packs. So that's what they did. So now... People got outraged, of course, and there was a missing card. Could you imagine that? that I mean, it's, so in 1934, they did create the 1933 Nat Lajoie card, but it was a year later, and anyone that wrote in complaining about not getting that Nat Lajoie card was mailed the 1934 card of the 1933 set of Nat Lajoie. Does that make sense? So what's interesting is, that means there's very few of these cards created. According to PSA's population report, there's only 83 of these cards graded uh, through PSA. And so that tells you a lot because the next player is 372 cards graded. Heine Manouche. I mean, he's part of my PC. So if Heine Manouche has 372 graded cards, then obviously Nap Lajoie would just over 80 he should have many many more this is a hall of famer went to the hall of fame very early like uh within the first few years the hall of fame was even created nat blagioy was inducted and what's interesting is they're actually a lot of them are in pretty decent condition because when they received these cards people took care of it it wasn't like one that they would just open up rip up pack and sort through them and stuff these were ones that they knew it was a big deal. They'd been missing this card forever. Even though it was a player that hadn't played in 30 years. Like, what do kids care about? That'd be like kids really caring about getting a Chipper Jones card. Like, it, it's not that big of a deal. But because it was rare, because it wasn't available, people wanted it. So when they got them, they took care of them. What's interesting also is there's a legend that a lot of these cards have staple holes through them or they have paper clip marks on them for where they were held. That's because they were attached to a piece of paper, a letter stating, here's your card that you were supposed to get last year, and now you got it this year. So, while they're all in pretty good condition, a lot of them have these little marks or indentions or holes from staples, so that makes it a pretty cool card too. So I thought you'd appreciate that random baseball card sports history note, and uh, I'll try to do more of these. I have a few of them uh, locked up in the cabeza. I'll try and do some more of these as we go. So whatever you do, make sure you have a happy hobby.